From the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Bracely, presented by a Cloud Guru, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive Cloudcast studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. You know, we we constantly sort of have to go back and evaluate where we are, go back and, and look at trends, you know, figure out how fast certain things have moved and then how well people are, are adapting to those trends. And, you know, if you're listening to this show, you know that we always try and stay a little bit ahead of the curve, um, but then we also try and get back to sort of some pragmatism and reality. And, you know, today we really want to go look at um, as more and more of the public clouds grow, as they evolve, um, as more and more people are beginning to use them, is to really go back and say, okay, it's great that they've evolved, but how well are they being adopted? How well are people adapting their skills to that and so forth? So today, very, very excited to have back on the show, Joe Kinsella, uh, founder and CTO of Cloud Health. Joe, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me back. You know, I, I looked... Uh, we always, you know, the guests that, that really dig into stuff with us, we always love to have them back on, and we're always a little bit uh, sort of negligent in bringing them back as soon as we'd like to. I think it's been since December of last year. So give us a sense, um, obviously a lot changes in, you know, eight months, nine months, and so forth. Where do you see cloud usage here in, in 2018 um, in terms of, you know, both adoption, but also just maturity of people beginning to understand what they're really using in the, in the public cloud? It's been astounding, the progress that we've made uh, over the last year. So, you know, one of the trends that was really early when you and I were chatting last last December, Brian, was this concept of pervasive multi-cloud, which is, well, enterprises back a year ago were using multiple cloud providers. There really wasn't um, an intent from a strategy perspective to really leverage them. And today, you know, I call it pervasive multi-cloud, which is across enterprises, a particularly large enterprise, you just see this willingness to adopt, you know, an incredibly heterogeneous portfolio of clouds to be able to support their uh, their businesses. And, and that's just getting started. I think there's other changes around uh, uh, modernization that's occurred in the data center. We've seen changes around just the, the evolution of the cloud center of excellence, the, uh, you know, just the maturity the enterprise has brought to what they expect from vendors in the cloud now. And then certainly there's been changes across the cloud landscape itself around uh, Google and Alibaba and Azure and Amazon. Yeah. And I know, you know, I saw a report that, that your team had put out here recently. Um, you know, you were citing some statistics and uh, kind of co- collaborating with some other data that was out there. And one of the things that jumped out at me is I don't think we've seen um, people count things differently. But in essence, what we've seen is, uh, you know, the big three are still Azure, AWS is generally considered number one, sometimes depending on how you count it, Azure's number two. But but those two are, you know, roughly tend to be one and two. Uh, Google or IBM tend to be three or four. But we haven't seen, you know, the numbers for, say, like an AWS in terms of market share is still in the 30s, right? We don't have the, the dominance that we had with, you know, Microsoft at the desktop or Oracle with the database or Cisco with networking where it was 70, 80, 90 percent. Um, what are you seeing? Are you still seeing generically from people, uh, you know, the idea that they they want to take advantage of multiple clouds, or are they they shifting their thinking in terms of we feel like we need to align to one or the other? Or what what are you hearing just as things continue to evolve? Oh, I, I think we're starting to see the evolution of really just a more top down strategic approach to uh, the types of clouds that you adopt in the enterprise. And so I think that's brought about a deliberate approach to be multi-cloud. Yeah. And and it's not just necessarily multi-cloud to avoid vendor lock-in. I think that's where most people kind of assume that would be kind of the reason why we would go multi-cloud. It's really multi-cloud to to harness the um, kind of the the rich palette of colors that we have to paint with in the cloud, which is, you know, um, uh, I, I, I was chatting with a large enterprise CIO um, uh, relatively recently who was just talking about how and when he uses uh, a mix of, of uh, VMware, Nutanix, Amazon, uh, Alibaba, Google, and Azure. Right. Uh, which seems like a very disparate set of uh, uh, technologies and, and uh, products and services to be using. But for him, it was more of a means to deliver value back to his business users and to give them, them choice. And so I think that's really uh, maybe the biggest change that is occurring in the marketplace today is, is, the, is this this shift towards really a deliberate approach to be multi-cloud. Right, right. And I, and I think to a certain extent, 
that shouldn't totally surprise people. I mean, if you if you think about it, we've been using multi-cloud for a while. People would use WebEx or they'd use BlueJeans or they'd use Google Hangouts. They'd use Salesforce. They would use, you know, maybe Dropbox or Box. So, I mean, we've, we've got institutional experiences of using multi-clouds. We don't always think about them that way if they're a SaaS application more and more as we're using the IS services, the PaaS services, the ML services. Um, that becomes kind of part of the conversation. Now, the the flip side of that is we 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 then sort of have this human instinct to kind of compare them, right? We go, oh well, Google's got this kind of compute, Azure's got this kind of compute, my, uh, you know, AWS does compute, you know, like this. And I don't think we we always are are that good at sort of realizing that that the way they do costing, the way they do billing, the options that they throw out, those are very different. Um, are you seeing people kind of recognize that? That that level, you know, how you pay for it, what the billing options are, or how the pricing is done, is very different, or or do people not at that level of maturity yet? Yeah, no, I mean, I think we're starting to see the beginning of that level of maturity. I think, um, you know, you, you look, we lived for so many years with infrastructure as a service being the primary way we thought of the public cloud, and infrastructure as a service, you know, uh, it really converged to be really a common set of uh, features and functions relatively quickly and early in the evolution of the cloud, platform as a service is highly divergent. And, and so what you're seeing is, is I think there is some commonality now around infrastructure as a service. Yes, everyone's storage and compute is slightly different and priced in a slightly different way, but, but they're more alike than they are different. But once you get into platform services uh, uh, within these clouds, just the you know, everything is completely different from uh, how they're priced to tiered to how they, they're discounted. And so I think, um, you know, I think there's, there's the, that complexity really is just beginning to get understood. I also think there's the complexity of scale, which is, you know, all of these clouds are relatively easy to understand from a cost perspective um, uh, when you're using small or moderate scale. But as you start to scale up and, you know, and the, and the simple truth is, is that, the way the cloud gets adopted is uh, from team inward instead of from IT outward. And right, so right. Because of that, you know, like one of our customers I was chatting with recently, they have uh, 1,200 teams using Amazon, you know, 1,200 different places where there is an opportunity to make good choices from a cost perspective and not good choices from a cost perspective. And so that level of decentralization really has never happened uh, in any IT technology to this degree. And so I think that adds an enormous burden of complexity to how you manage costs. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. I, I, I see that uh, myself in sort of my day job more and more is, is those, those individual groups that will have their own AWS account. They have to manage them. Um, like you said, things get driven by the team first. Sometimes they then boil up to central IT or so, some centralized group to sort of sort out how to do it. But uh, yeah, you do have... Um, you, you do you do have this challenge of like so many different groups and they have different perspectives on them. Are you finding you know you guys uh, from a from a technology perspective perspective have um, tools that you know address cost and deployments into all the major clouds? Are, are you finding that you know th- there's any tips or tricks to help people sort of do apples to apples comparisons or apples to things that look like Apple's, you know, are there anything that, that would help somebody who said, say, a, an Azure shop or a few groups that are an Azure shop, because maybe they're the Windows development team, be able to speak in a common language as the team that does, I don't know, Linux stuff over on AWS or ML and Google, or are, are you finding that's a, a challenge? Or is that something that still, you know, it will be a problem down the road? It's definitely a challenge. I, I do think I'll tell you what the solution is. And unfortunately, it's easier for me to state the solution than it is for uh, customers to realize the solution. But the solution is, is we really in the future will not manage to cloud costs. What we'll manage to is uh, KPIs, business KPIs. So um, you know, a good analogy would be uh, uh, before starting cloud health, I had a, um, a, a built manage of, of, and was responsible for a large scale um, a public cloud deployment. And there were a set of core business KPIs that, uh, that governed that, uh, that infrastructure. So one of the business KPIs, because it was a, a business all about document archiving, was cost per document per month. Very simple calculation. Cost is in that equation, but it's, 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 it's truly a business KPI that you're managing. Right. I think the more that we start to translate our cloud costs into business terms, and particularly 
business terms that that um, executives, line of business leaders can understand, the more uh, the we get true apples to apples comparison. But in addition to that, I would just say I think one of the the, the other trends we see is we're we're seeing and we highly recommend across our customer base is build out a cloud center center of excellence, which is build out a centralized team that can take those 1,200 teams and make them all more effective in what, what it is that they do. And that team certainly would take on costs, but they would also be responsible for the uh, security compliance from a configuration standpoint, from overall governance, as well as just integration into your uh, back office and your incident management and, um, uh, you know, and just your overall workflow of your business. And, and I think the more that customers invest in a CCOE, uh, you know, I'd say that we see the more successful they've been uh, yeah. in terms of managing their cloud costs, managing their overall uh, excellence of their cloud initiatives. Yeah. I, I use this analogy sometime and I, and I talk about whether, you know, I'm talking about somebody's data center or they're talking about their, their public cloud uh, usage or whatever is, you know, if, if you were in, for example, you were in the, the, the automotive industry, you know, you understood especially if you were in the part of the industry that, or the part of the company that, you know, manufactured the car, had to deal with plants, you had to deal with suppliers and so forth. And, and, and so you understood, like, if we, you know, have to, to screw this bolt into a car, you know, 10 more seconds longer, or we have to do something for some value, sort of to your point of KPIs, you understood how to relate that to this will add this much to the cost of the car, this will slow down the line and being able to, to create output that we want. And we don't really do that as well um, in IT. And I sort of use this analogy that, you know, the, the, the data centers and the clouds are really just 21st century sort of bit factories. Like they're, they're factories that make bits. And you have to get to a point where you understand, you know, if you're doing this task manually, you want to automate it or you're using this input into what's going to be the thing that becomes your front end of a banking experience or your customer experience. You have to understand what that costs to the business. And I, I don't know that we've done... It's probably somewhat on on us as IT vendors and, and IT practitioners, but again, it's it's also that communication. Are you finding because you highlighted it's in this sort of cloud center of excellence, but it's a language. Are you finding anybody who has done this really well, or good examples of people that have been able to get out of the IT mindset, get into the this is what this technology decision costs for the business, um, and and been able to translate that really well? Uh, yes, they're outliers today. I, yeah. I think they'll, they'll, they'll be the norm um, uh, three to five years from now, but they're definitely outliers today. And, and I'll, I'll say this, um, you know, I, uh, I had to drive a, a transformation in the public cloud before starting this company. And as part of that, aligning everything I did to KPIs and then understanding where I needed those KPIs to be in order to be effective and efficient was the fundamental way I was able to drive that transformation. So, so in, in, in for me, that was back in 2011. And uh, so I built out an early cloud center of excellence and I, 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 driv- I, I drove it from uh, KPIs uh, downward and it was very successful. And it's something that um, I've been surprised how long it's taken to evolve. But, but we have customers today at Cloud Health that um, are definitely outliers here. They understand this deeply and they're transforming their businesses using a KPI-centric approach to managing cloud costs. Yeah. No, it, it makes sense. I think, you know, the ones that we hear, especially like you said, the outliers, um, you know, some of the ones that they get a lot of press, th- they tend to have this perspective that's that's almost like, well, wait, if if what you're delivering is essentially your your product to your customer, right? You're sort of, it's like, it, it is your digital experience. It is your customer, your customer interface. You know, how can you not do that? And And then they, you know, when you when you talk to IT people about that, they go, well, no, no, I'm just delivering, you know, a bunch of servers or I'm delivering network or I'm delivering this much storage capacity. I almost feel like, like you said, that this sort of KPI approach almost has to replace this this thing that we've had for a while where people say, well, we're taking a cloud first approach, which tends to be more, you know, location of where you put an application or which vendor you're working with to do it. Whereas your your thought process is really, Think of the thing you're building, whether it's an application or a set of applications, as that's the business service, and you you have to manage to what that cost. Can that cost be competitive? How much will you charge for that? You know, will it be profitable? And I think if you start with that mindset first, so cloud first is a nice concept of where you locality put it. But if you if you go to KPI first, which is essentially sort of understand the cost of delivering that, just like any other part of your business was, you're in a much better position to to have the right frame of mind, the right language, the right models to do it. 
I, I completely agree. That's exactly right. And I think, you know, we, uh, the, 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 our enthusiasm around the public cloud was really driven by the opportunity to transform our businesses and transforming our businesses was all about, you know, driving greater efficiency and optimization from our business services. And so that again comes down to, you know, what is efficiency and efficiency is aligning our usage of the cloud to what we need from a business perspective. Uh, some aspects of that might be agility and innovation, but certainly has to be done with uh, the right cost and, and cost KPIs in mind as well. So I think that's the next evolution of the cloud. And I would say as, as companies go to look at how to go do this, I, I find when you're looking at building out a CCOE, uh, the key is, is you really need to look at two things. You need a superior platform and you need a su- superior um, uh, platform vendor, uh, a partner that can work with you and understands where you need to go and can distill for you an understanding of where you are today and what the changes are you need to drive to get to the next level of maturity in your CCOE. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you guys, obviously you do a lot of things in terms of, of the cloud health platform, in terms of helping customers, you know, make sure applications are secure, help them migrate cost, cost management's obviously a, a, a big kind of core competency of what you do. How do you find, what's your, what's your take on, are the, are the cloud vendors doing, are they doing things that are positive in terms of making it easier to sort of understand the cost of things or, you know, is their approach, Hey, my job is to, to deliver the services. I'm going to price them accordingly. Um, it is used to complexity of that. And then I'm going to let the ecosystem like cloud health sort of sort out the simplicity or, or do you feel like there's anything they're, they're beginning to do to make it easier as a foundation and then which, you know, people can, can leverage better platforms on top of that. Yeah, I mean, and you know this, Brian, which is uh, IT costing has always been complex. Right. So, uh, so it was co- complex before; it's complex now. I do think there's these two um, uh, competing needs that have been fighting against each other that I think a lot of people don't give cloud vendors credit for. Which is, on one hand, there's this desire to have ease of use, to have something as simple as Google's sustained use discount for compute, right? Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, there's a desire to have a uh, purpose built to be able to customize. Uh, your cost specific to your need, um, um, such as Amazon reservations and, you know, and Azure reservations is a great example of that. And so I think these two needs compete with each other. And in, in truth, I think what cloud providers are learning is, is that there really isn't one answer here, which right. is the simple truth is, is we want it to be easy to use and we want it to be purpose built. And we want it to be each of these at different times for different business services and for different workloads within different business services. So I think that, you know, with that comes complexity. And I think it comes a desire on the part of cloud providers to provide us freedom of choice. And with that freedom of choice, you know, we have to accept the the, the consequence of that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is an interesting kind of paradigm. It's like you said, it's people are trying to to get it right. Um, Although sometimes it's like we we provide one solution, we hope everybody gets, you know, in in the Google case, in theory, it sounds great. The more you use it, the cheaper it gets. And then you hear stories of people saying, well, but how do I budget for that? If I don't know exactly what it's going to cost and, and it may be cheaper, I can't put that in a budget spreadsheet. And then on the other hand, you have people that that hear things like reserved instances and, and stuff like that for, for an Amazon or Azure. And they go, dude, I was never trained in that. If I did, I would work in, you know, at the Chicago Board of Exchange to do futures trading or something. And, and so, yeah, there's, there's, I hear, I hear different perspectives on stuff. I think, I think you're right. Um, we, we want, we sort of want it all. And, and the cloud providers are trying to figure out where on that spectrum they can, they can deliver stuff for us that makes sense is easier, but at the same time, you know, scratches the itch of customization, scratches the itch of simplicity. It's, there, there's no right answer to it. Yeah, I, com- I completely agree. And I think, um, you know, I think so. There will always be a need for um, uh, support, uh, yep. both from a, from a partner perspective as well as from a product perspective. Yep. Uh, and and I think that's um, you know that's the way that our industry worked uh, thirty years ago. It's the way it will work thirty years from now. I don't think that's um, uh, that's an issue. I think the key is going to be for us to make sure that we're continuing to move forward and really delivering on the promise of the cloud, which is to transform our businesses to give us an unfair competitive advantage in our industry by nature of the agility and innovation we can bring as a result of this transformation. And I think as long as we're continuing to keep our eye on the ball, that this is really not about technology. This is about business transformation. 
and we're fulfilling the uh, promise of that business transformation, I think uh, all will be right with the world and, and you know, we'll drive uh, the economics that we need from our business services. Yep. Yep. Well, let me ask you one last question, because I know that, uh, you know, be, besides your day job of, of, you know, trying to keep all the technology in line for, for cloud health, you're always sort of thinking, kind of big picture thinking about stuff. What else is, is on your radar in terms of just kind of big ideas, technology ideas, trends that you're, you're thinking about and, and to some extent, you know, writing about and blogging about these days? I think the, the big thing that's been on my mind, and, I, and it's been on my mind for several years, but it's really, I think, just now starting to come true is, I've been calling it the heterogeneous cloud in in the same way that the hybrid cloud, I mean, depending on your definition, is all about, you know, having a business service that spans, uh, you know, on-premise and uh, public cloud or two or more cloud environments. Uh, The heterogeneous cloud I I was prognosticating a few years ago would be kind of building business services using best of breed platform services from multiple different vendors. So it might be, you know, a uh, load balancer service from uh, one vendor and a, a blob store from another vendor and, you know, uh, some function compute uh, from another vendor. And uh, I'm finally beginning to see that, uh, Brian, which is I, you know, I've been running into um, uh, 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 multiple entrepreneurs building early businesses that are really treating the cloud as just a pallet. And uh, it, there really is no line between uh, Google and Amazon and Azure this is just a, a palette of colors that they can use in um, in the painting that they're rendering, and so I think that's that's exciting to me. I think that if if that continues to trend in the right direction, I think it will be a really interesting world we'll be living in uh, three to five years from now. Uh, I also am, am particularly interested in the opportunity to um, to optimize from a business perspective. So uh, so much of the optimization in the last thirty years has been uh, driven by kind of feature function driven optimization of workloads and applications and infrastructure. And I think we're reaching a point where smart software platforms can do more than that for us. They can understand our intent and where we need to go and what we're trying to achieve from a business perspective and, uh, and be able to do, do continuous optimization. The analogy I, I often give here is high frequency trading, which is before the advent of high frequency trading, we relied on human beings to uh, to do trading and with high frequency trading, suddenly we could achieve um, uh, you know a pace of change and an ability to drive decision cycles that we never could have when humans were in the middle. I think the same thing's going to happen in the cloud, and that that's particularly exciting to me. Yeah, no, I agree, and and I like the I like the sort of analogy of uh, of multiple colors or, or sort of palette of colors. I think it uh, you know it. it it gives people the ability to say, like, "Hey, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this how I want it to be." But yeah, there shouldn't be nearly any friction between those things to to kind of pull it all together. So, well, very cool, Joe. Thank you as always for uh, for being on. Uh, always great to talk to you. We need to do this more often. Um, with that, uh, best place for for folks to kind of reach out either to you to to talk about some of those things or reach out to Cloud Health. Sure. So, Cloud Health, you'll find us at cloudhealthtech.com. Uh, you'll also uh, find us on Twitter at Cloud Health Tech. And you can find me directly on Twitter at uh, Joe Kinsella. Uh, uh, it's J O E K I N S E L L A. Very and, cool. Uh, happy to chat with anybody. Love to do shop talk. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Well, Joe, as always, thank you so much for the time. Great to have you back on, folks. As always, thanks for listening this week, and we will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more podcasts, show notes, and everything social media. And visit acloud.guru for all your cloud training needs.